Hello and welcome to this lecture series of ours where we'll be talking about game theory, its allied literatures and the application of the same in our day to day lives. Myself, Ron Axel, I am an alumni of Sri Sat Sai Institute of Higher Learning. I'll be joined by Unni Naren Krup, also an alumni of Sri Sat Sai Institute of Higher Learning. We both will be bringing to you the, in the most simplest of terms, the basic facets, the fundamentals of game theory literature, what game theory is all about, how we can use it in our day-to-day lives and how the insights that we can get from these lectures can itself be used in day-to-day lives to enhance the understandings of the events that happen all the time around us. So with that hope we pray to Swami that he gives us the strength to continue forward and also hope that you all would be supporting us. With that, without any further ado, let us start. So, as you can see, we have named this session called Let's Game It. And this is the first lecture of that series. So now, before delving deeper into this, uh, let me give you a note of caution that the kind of examples and kind of theories that we're going to discuss over here do have complete resemblance with the theories that you can find in any standard game theory book. But the only difference being that we will not go into the rigorous mathematical tools or mathematical representations. Rather, we'll talk about in the most simplest of terms how game theory can be used or how the insights from the game theory literature can be used in our day to day lives. In the consecutive lectures or towards the end of this lecture series, we will surely bring, you, bring to you the mathematical derivations and sophistications that are used in game theory. But till then, hold on, be with us, let's try to understand and delve deeper into what game theory is so that towards the end we will be able to appreciate the mathematical sophistications of the same. With that, let us start. So let us discuss the contents of this lecture. So we'll start with a general introduction, then we'll give a brief history. Then we'll talk about a few examples in our day to day lives. Then we'll give a, an interesting trivia about one of the famous game theorists and mathematicians. Then we'll talk about a few terms associated with game theory. Then we'll discuss a typical game. How do you discuss, how do you talk about or interpret rather a typical game theoretic matrix? Then we'll discuss several types of games that will be discussed in detail in the consecutive lectures. And finally, we'll summarize the things that we have discussed in today's lecture. So with that, let us start. In the introduction, let us talk about what we mean by decisions versus games. When a person wants to decide on doing something, that person can be a particular individual person or a particular team or a firm or maybe the government or any other individual body that can be represented as a singular body. There must be some cross effect of their actions in a sense that if a particular individual or particular team is doing something that will have an impact on the other individuals around them or the other firms around them or the other teams that they are colliding with or, or for that matter the other governments spread across the different countries. So this cross effect has to be taken into consideration. Now without the cross effect it becomes only a decision like a decision to get up early in the morning to go for supravatam. For some, that might depend upon whether others are getting up early in the morning or not. Or for some, that doesn't depend upon anything else but their sheer determination to the task at hand. So if that person is taking this decision without taking into account the decision of others, then that only becomes a normal decision. But it becomes a strategic game only when the participants are mutually aware of the cross effect. That means what one person does affects the other. If both the people whom we call the players are aware of this, then that becomes a strategic game. 
Now this distinction is captured very nicely by how the name has been given and that's why it's called a strategic game and not a simple game. But again, a note of caution. If there is only one player, like for example, you all must be studying right now in your microeconomics, I have already studied in your microeconomics the monopoly market or monopolistic market. So if it's a monopoly market where there is only one particular seller in the market or if it's a monopsonistic market where there is one singular buyer in the market then in those cases game theory cannot be applied because there are not many participants there are no one else other than the particular person so whose uh, decision should be taken into consideration by the person no one and also infinite players like let's say the perfect competitive market where the basic assumption is large number of buyers and sellers. So if there are very large numbers of buyers and sellers, game theory might not be a very nice tool to address the issues over there. So that's why this cross sign. But again, this is to start with. As we go along, we'll see that even with infinite amount of players, we can use game theory. But for that, you have to wait a little longer. Now let's talk about the historical anecdotes. The major development of game theory literature began in 1920s with the works of the mathematician Emil Borel and John von Neumann. Now you must be wondering that in economics when you come across the game theory, it is used maybe in a microeconomic sense or in a macroeconomic sense by taking governments or firms into consideration. But you'll be surprised to know that the origin of this literature lies in the brainchild or in the brain children, I would say, of the mathematicians like Emil Borel and John von Neumann. So it is the mathematicians who first came across or rather initiated the discussion on game theory and the decisive event in that would be the publication of this book called theory of games and economic behavior by von neumann and oscar morganson even though von neumann has worked extensively and contributed extensively to the field of mathematics and physics once he started working with oscar he started using the insights of game theory into analyzing the economic behavior as well. And that's where, and or rather that's when economics, in the field of economics, game theory was first used. And now comes the stalwart in the field. I mean, maybe the word stalwart might not be the right word to be used, but the most famous game theoretician whom we all are aware of or many of us must have come across at some point of time. His name is John F. Nash. In 1950, he gave the concept of Nash equilibrium and initiated the study of bargaining, which we'll be discussing in the consecutive lectures. In 1970s, game theory was used in evolutionary biology and recently it has also been used in the field of behavioral economics as well. So let's talk about a few examples. Now, I'll not read this out. What I'd suggest to you is take a pause, pause this video over here and try to go through this example that I've cited. The source is a book written by Avinash Dikshit called Games of Strategy. So I'll tell you in brief what it says. It gives you a, a particular situation where two of the people, two of the students rather, wanted to bunk the exam or wanted to come late for a particular exam but uh, but they were concerned with the teacher what will the teacher say so when uh, they came a bit late for the exam they gave an excuse once uh, they gave a particular excuse the excuse of what they called as the excuse of flat tire so they said that they had a flat 
tire. And because of that, they couldn't reach the exam center in time. And asked for an extension or rather asked if they can appear in the exam in the other days. And to their utter surprise, I would say that the professor agreed to that and conducted their exam the next day. He handed over two sheets to each one of them and there was only one particular question worth 10 points. The first page had 10 points worth of question and the second page they had a question and there was only one question which was worth 90 points, the maximum point and uh, the question was which particular tire was flat. Now from this particular example what we can see is if this is a strategic interaction. If the students would have understood that the uh, professor would be uh, making such a decision or the professor would be giving such a particular uh, question then they might have discussed among themselves that which tire they should write. Otherwise it might happen that the person one, the student one might write left tire and the student two might write right tire. In that particular case they might get caught, their excuse might get caught. On the other hand, the professor too is quite smart. He might know beforehand that uh, students will be giving such excuses. To prevent that from happening or to check that from happening or to uh, understand what whether that excuse was truly an excuse or not, he designed a exam like that. Now he too has to take into consideration what will be the reactions or the answers of the student's prior hand before designing this particular exam. So that means you can see then in a very small setup of a classroom, there is strategic interaction between the teacher and the students, both of whom have to be, have to have some idea, some basic idea about what the other person is going to do. Another example, this example is something that you all, I'm sure, might be able to relate to. Let's say you are in your hostel rooms, you are uh, sharing a room with more of your brothers and let's say there are some shortages of uh, different things. Let's say you don't have detergents. So this these items that you can see, these items have been picked up from this book called Games of Strategy. Okay, so you can just uh, forget these items. So these items, uh, you can think of the items that can be there in your a hostel room that can be uh, let's say a mopping stick that can be a broom or that can be uh, 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 or let's say a soap for someone or that can be something that all the people use together or that's a common uh, item of usage let's say that is exhausted and warden has given uh, you the permission or the room of yours the permission to go to the uh, uh, to the mandir to buy the things that are necessary for the particular room. Now either let's say uh, when that particular timing or slot is given to you to go to the mandir, mandir shop to uh, buy these things, uh, you have a cricket match to see. Now whether you will devote your time to the cricket match or you go to the mandir to see them to, to buy the things that are necessary. Now this uh, my dear friend uh, should be kept in mind that this is a particular object that concerns everyone. So if one of you doesn't go and others also do not go by looking at you, then everybody loses. Now the best outcome for a particular person would be that he doesn't go and one of the other roommates goes and gets it for him. And he will be a loser if no one goes and he has to make a move. Now till which particular point they will keep delaying it and who will be that particular person who is who would have to go now the common sense dictates the person who has uh, the least tolerance might be pushed or might be forced to go or the person who has a least say in the room or somebody who is not liked by the roommates let's say might have to be forced to go and buy this so we can see even in such a simple situation of our lives strategic interaction is a key. With that, let us go to the formal definition. Game theory is nothing but a study of how rational agents behave in strategic situa situations where each agent, mind you, each agent must know the decisions of the other, other agents before making a decision 
which they can deem to be best for themselves like in the case of the professor and the students like in the case of the room example that i have given and this game theory as i have mentioned earlier is used not only in analyzing economic behavior but also in warfare political negotiations markets for marriage and dating and many more now let's take a pause and uh, let's look for a particular trivia when you must be aware of this particular person he is the john nash on whom the movie a beautiful mind was made so when he was studying in princeton nash was known as what they call is the phantom of fine hall because he would be seen in uh, the library doing or solving complex mathematical problems either on the wall of the library or on the glass that will be there in the library not on the papers so so that's how he was and he was deemed he was considered by his fellow mates as the most original mathematician of his times so that was the brilliance of john nash i suggest all of you to look or to search for the movie uh, with the name a beautiful mind which is based on john nash and kindly have a look i hope all of you would enjoy that movie now let's get back to the presentation now let's be familiar with some terminologies what are the terminologies that we should be concerned about first players the people who are playing the game are called players strategies strategies are as i said in case of the room example that i gave the strategies of a particular person can be either to relax or to go either to watch tv or to go and buy or there can be multiple strategies either to go and watch tv either to go and relax and sleep either to go to mandir or to go and buy the things necessary so these are called the strategies available to the players payoffs is what is based on the decisions that you make and the decision of others the payoff in this particular case can be in terms of the utility gain which can be the cardinal or ordinal but also can be in terms of monetary gain or loss let's say if you go to buy something from the mandi shop uh, there is a cost that you have to incur in terms of uh, the auto rickshaw that you have to call and have to book and go or if you are going by even by uh, let's say on foot while coming back you might get uh, tempted to buy a few of the ice creams that you can get in mandir or few of the food items that you might be uh, interested in buying so that might cost you a penny so that's why uh, this payoffs can either be in terms of utility gain or in terms of monetary gain that will be discussed extensively in the consequent lectures and the most important assumption is rational maximizer that means each one of the agents is actually maximizing his or her utility and is a rational maximizer if we break this assumption of rational maximizer and bring it closer to what uh, is being discussed nowadays in behavioral economics where they talk about irrationality then the situation changes completely now this is what we call a payoff matrix how do we interpret this particular box the first number in each box that is 10 8 12 10 determines the payout or i would say the payoff for person 1 and the second numbers 2 3 4 and 1 determines the payoff for person 2 and these are the actions of person 2 and person 1 this person 1 can be you this person 2 can be your friend this action can be going to mandir this can be not going to mandir and the same action sets are available to even this person as well or maybe the actions can be different but when this there is a interaction that means when person 1 that means you are playing action a and your friend is playing action c the outcome that you get is 10 and what he gets is 2 this can be in terms of how much utility you gain how much utility he gains or maybe the how much money you save by not going how much money he saves by not going similarly we can interpret all the boxes i would like you to take a pause and look at the matrix carefully 
Now what happens when we bring in the concepts of equilibrium? How do we see what should be the best possible outcome would be discussed in the next lecture. But for the time being, let's be familiarized with uh, the payoff matrix and how to read the numbers. Now, these are the types of games or uh, let's say a kind of a trailer uh, to what is going to coming next. What is going to be coming next? Uh, next in a sense the next lectures that will be delivering. So for there are types of games uh, include complete versus incomplete information games. There are games of simultaneous moves and sequential games. There are games of pure and mixed strategy games. There are games that can be used in a cooperative environment and there are games that can be used to address issues related to conflict. There are games which we call as signaling games and a very interesting uh, sort of games, type of games called the evolutionary games. We'll see how much we can cover in the consecutive lectures. We'll try to cover as much as we can. Now, come to the last point is the summary. What we have discussed today, we have discussed a brief introduction coupled with historical perspective. We have discussed three examples like the example of professor and students, uh, the, the, the situation in a hostel room, then terms associated with strategic games, example of a typical game we have discussed, the payoff matrix I mean, and then we have also discussed different types of games that we are going to discuss in the consecutive lecture. So today, let us end the first lecture over here. So, with uh, the hope of seeing you all in the next lecture, we say goodbye and uh, would hope to join you all very soon in the next lecture, maybe in the next week. Uh, if you have liked this video, please share with share it with as many friends of yours as possible so that many people can derive some benefit out of it. If you have any feedback or anything that you want to share, please feel free to contact any one of us. We'll be giving the contact details, uh, the mail ID and phone numbers in the next lecture series. So till then, take a pause, think about what you have discussed, try to see, uh, don't try to see any book right now because that might uh, be a bit confusing. Uh, so. Try to go through what we have discussed today. Try to see, try to uh, try to visualize the different games that you can see around you. I have given you the example of a hostel. You can think of uh, the example of a classroom. Uh, you can think of the example of a game, a football game or house match. The strategies that you devise in house match or many more. Till then, happy thinking, stay safe, stay happy. And we pray to Swami that he keeps everybody happy and makes everybody smile. With that hope, I say goodbye. Thank you. Meet you in the next lecture.